Hello everyone, my name is Araceli Garcia and I have been a high school ELA teacher for almost 25 years. I've taught all different levels of ELA, including English language development of all levels, including newcomers. I've taught AVID, I've taught English 1 through AP Lit and AP Language. So I just wanted to share some of the lesson plans that I do on my first day and my first week just to really get to know my students. Um, and, you know, I'm going to probably say this a few times, but uh, the number one thing I always recommend teachers out there, and I know some of you might be new to education or you might feel like you're new with so many different things happening and changes. Um, the number one thing I've always said that helps the most with classroom management and just having a great year is building rapport with your students from day one, building rapport, getting to know them, being authentic about your joy and excitement to start the year and have them sitting there in your classroom. So uh, I'm going to just give you a little bit of tips and also talk to you about this lesson plan that I've used for years that has really um, you know, made my experience wonderful. I, like I said, I love teaching. I have always loved teaching. Uh, even on those tough days with those tough kids, uh, I've always loved it. Um, I do work in a little small suburban town uh, about 30 minutes east of Los Angeles. It is a mainly working class community. Most of our students are uh, Latinx students. Uh, most of them come from homes where college, uh, they would be the first in their family to attend college. Uh, and so, you know, I myself actually graduated from, my, from the school I taught at, so I know the community pretty well. Uh, all right, so let's get started here. So I like to call this the first day activity. So one of the things I, I believe strongly in is to always make your class student-centered. And so, you know, sadly, especially at the high school level and middle school, students will sit through six classes on their first day and listen to a teacher. Listen to the teacher uh, talk and talk and talk and talk about you know, you need to bring a three ring binder, make sure you have pencils, this is a, how you use a hall pass, these are the things you're not allowed to do, just on and on. And I've always imagined that would be horrible, right, for anyone to sit through all those hours. You're so excited to see your friends, to find out about these classes, and to just kind of be lectured at. So I stopped doing that many, many years ago. Uh, I do have a syllabus, I do have, of course, very clear classroom expectations, but I'm not going to go through that on day one. I'm gonna give them my syllabus, they're going to read it for homework, I say, and we'll review it tomorrow. We'll have plenty of time to go through all of my routines. On day one, it's all about them. I wanna know who is in my classroom so I can start making uh, decisions and adjustments. So, after I give a really brief, and I'm telling you, I put a timer on myself, a uh, five minute, at most introduction who am i how long have i been teaching things like that i jump right into this activity called a never before seen intro object uh introduction so uh, this is adapted from a program that i i work with called uh, design based learning the doreen nelson uh, form of design based learning it is uh, out of ucla center x if you want to know more information but we do a lot of project based uh lessons and so on day one, I turned this into a little challenge. You know, a lot of kids like a little bit of a competition. So I, I, that's what I use. So my students will first, okay. So my students are going to, you know, see this slide here, which I will be providing the slide and a choice board for teachers to, to use and pick and choose uh, what they want. And so what you're going to do is you're going to introduce this essential question. Basically is how do we get to know each other? You know, what makes us kind of unique and different? Of course, they're going to be sitting at uh, sitting there looking at you like, what are you talking about, right? Why don't you just, just tell us the rules, right? Because they're so used to it. So then I present them with the problem. And so the challenge said, so, you know, we need to get a way to get to know each other, but we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, I'm going to have you find an object, has to be three-dimensional, that is in your possession. You are wearing it or it's in your backpack, it's in, on your desk. So it has to be a 3D object. And this 3D object is going to represent who you are as a person, who you are as a student, right? Uh, so I want them to start thinking in that abstract manner, right? Because we're going to deal with a lot of symbolism and personification and figurative language throughout the year. So I'm just going to go ahead and get uh, into that. So they're going to find a 3D object. And I'm going to give them 30 seconds to find it. Shouldn't take too long. And then this kind of scares them a little bit. <laughs> 
they are going to share out this object and give a short, less than 30 second little presentation. All they're going to do is say their sentence and that's it. So again, um, this is what I give them. I'm going to give them a little bit more instruction. And so then I'm going to, oh, let me go back here. Um, I am going to give them this challenge, right? And so after, you know, they have found their object, I'm going to have them do a presentation. I'm going to show you different ways you can do this, depending on your style, your group level, the age level, and so forth. Um, so one of the things I like to do is have them do a little memory game, getting to know their students and students' names, is I have them add, take out a sheet of paper, and I'm going to do this also maybe on the projector, right? And so as each student presents, I'm going to write the student's first name and the object, right? So let's say, you know, Tim over there chose his shoe, uh, so and so over here chose a notebook, so I'm going to write the names. And so once I get through about, you know, 10, 15 students, I say, okay, class, who has really good memory? Let's go ahead and turn the paper over. Who wants to try it? Who can name every single object in order, right? And so now we're kind of having fun, and you always get that kid like, I got it, I got it, right? Um, I couldn't do it because I have horrible memory. And so they start doing it. So then we continue, right? And they start sharing. Before I have them share out, you know, and stand up, I, you always want to get them to practice what they're going to say. That eases a little bit of their anxiety. I have them do a think pair share with their shoulder partner. Um, you can do this, like I said, I'll show you some various modifications. Uh, you might want to have them write it out. You're going to give them some examples. But I just wanted to show you, you know, some of the different ways that you can present. I would do this with my senior class, especially my senior AP Lit class. And so everyone was expected to stand up, speak loudly, look at the class, show their object, give their sentence. That was just the expectation. Everyone's going to do it. And so I'll talk a little bit about what to do if a, you know, a student is just not having it that day. So you don't want to fight them on that day, right? Um, okay, style number two. Style number two is have students do it in a small group. So you can put them in quads. They can each, you know, and I love to use the Kagan uh, strategy here. Uh, so I have these mats already made. I print them out. And, you know, when they put their seats together, it's already decided who's person one, two, three, four. It just saves a lot of time. Uh, and so you have person number one go and they once again say their little sentence. Maybe you give them instructions to tell them a little, tell each other a little bit more, you know, what they did this summer, things like that. You're trying to, again, ease that anxiety. They're coming in so anxious. You know, they don't know what to expect. Uh, you know, everything going on, we want to lower that that stress level so that they can be fully participants in your class. All right, so then they all rotate. And what you want to do is once again, ask them to take a sheet of paper out and they should be writing down everyone's name and their object. So once all three or four students are done, then you tell, okay, now we're going to turn this into a poem. We're going to turn this kind of like a, who am I poem, but it's going to be a, who are we? So as a team, as a small group, who are we? Right. And so they might say, oh, we are like a blank sheet of paper, not knowing what our future holds, but eager and ready to start. Right. We are like a sharpened pencil, ready to make our mistakes, but still ready to write our own future. So they just, you know, boom, boom, boom. They just keep writing and they come up with this beautiful uh, poster that you can have them do. Or maybe they do this on a Google uh, slide and add images. Right. So all things. So this is a lesson that can extend into your next day. So you're building community and getting to know a little bit about your students. Uh, here's another style that you can also use. Again, always start with a simple think, pair, share, talk to your partner uh, so they can really practice. Then I have a template that I use called a Who Am I poem. So this is going to be about themselves. And they uh, and I also walk them through a, a song that I love, which is the Foo Fighters. And I'll show you the lyrics. Um, that talks about, you know, metaphors comparing themselves to something or this awesome spoken word poem by Nate Williams called Who Am I? I'm going to show you and give you those two. After students have written their poem, you're walking them through, you're circulating the room. Maybe some of them want to take it home, finish it up for homework. Um, they can then record their poem on Flipgrid and then you can share out right in that manner. And so, again, there's different ways that you can go about having your students present uh, and share who they are and which object they chose. 
Okay, so those are the different uh, styles of presentations. Now, again, you know, I have encountered sometimes a student who is just extremely shy or, uh, you know, uh, again, has a social anxiety, doesn't want to present. And so I wouldn't push the student. I definitely want to let them know they still have to do it. Um, but there's different ways. Again, they can then, you know, do it as a recording. They can stay a little bit after class and just present to me. They can present to a small little group. And so, again, uh, being respectful, everyone's, you know, at different places uh, of how they feel about standing up and sharing, especially, you know, again, middle school and high school, we have lots of issues going on with, with image and so forth. All right, let me keep showing you. So uh, I also want to make sure I'm supporting my students, uh, my English language uh, learners, so my English learners, make sure that I know, you know, especially at the school that I work with, uh, we have a lot of English learners, and so there are different levels. And so I'm always going to be cognizant of what are the levels. Um, sometimes they might need a lot of scaffolding. And so here I might show this slide with some sentence frames. Um, and notice how they get increasingly more casual also, but then also more uh, vocabulary is there. So, um, and even the syntax is a little bit different. So uh, here's a sentence frame for that. Um, here is the actual criteria chart that I showed them. So before, you know, I give them the presentation, uh, you know, outline. I show them, okay, this is what I don't want. These are kind of like the rules, almost like uh, following directions on how to program your phone or something, right? So the green here on this side, it means it has to be 3D. It should be something that fits in their hand, not too big, right? Uh, has to be uh, something that represents who they are, not something that they like. So, you know, they shouldn't be showing a, a soccer ball because they like soccer, uh, rather, I'm like a soccer ball because I like to reach my goals, right? Yeah, all right. So things I don't want is uh, no words, so they can't just point to a picture. No technology, or else you you have a, a fashion show of cell phones out there, and you don't want to do that. Um, it, nothing too big, too small. They let them know that they're going to be presenting, right? Things like that. Uh, so again, I gave them a quick little list. Then here is, again, uh, this song that I just love, and that's uh, Times Like This by, uh, Times Like These by the Foo Fighters. And as you can see right away, uh, you have a metaphor, first line, right? And so uh, down here, I went ahead and gave you a link to the lyrics. I might print out the lyrics, have them color code, you know, where's the metaphor, where's some personification. You know, again, already day one. Um, so this is one idea. I can play I'm going to go to the next slide. You could listen to that on your own. Here's the template for a basic Who Am I poem. I would often have them do this in class. Uh, they can work with partners talking about, you know, who they are. They're comparing themselves using, uh, again, uh, similes. But then once they want to turn it into a poem, I would take out the word because and just leave those adjectives. And so, uh, again, I'm going to show you a, a choice board where I have some student samples that you could show. Finally, you don't have to do all of these things, but one of the spoken word poems that I love is this one called Who Am I? Uh, by, again, Nate Williams. And this really just powerful, I would definitely print out the lines for the students, print out the, the words. Um, lots of great stuff there. And especially, I think it hits home for a lot of my boys uh, because, again, it's passionate mm. and, and really hits, you know, in the heart of what it means to be a young person today. So uh, these are some, again, some of the activities I do. Day one, I play music when they're walking in. Uh, sometimes I play some Bob Marley, everything's gonna be all right. If they're seniors, I like to play a graduation song. <laughs> of course, they all get upset, like, no, oh, we don't wanna hear it, uh, because it makes them nervous, right? But, but I, I joke around, like, you know, I want you to think about it, like how important this day is and, and feel it. Uh, I stand at the door, and I know with COVID, you know, we might not, might not be shaking hands, but you're smiling, your friendly eyes, and you're welcoming your students. Um, there'll be time to, you know, do that seating chart and to do all of those uh, other things. You know, I let them kind of sit down. Later on, I can figure out uh, who's who. Uh, when I do this activity, I gather so much data. Who are my introverts? Who are my outgoing students? Who are my English learners? Who are my students? who are going to need a little bit more time maybe to work on things. So uh, again, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just switch over, show you here this uh, choice board I created. And it's basically the same thing I just went over, but it just gives you more step-by-steps. And I also have links here to all kinds of activities 
and activities that you can extend for uh, you know a couple of days. Sometimes you have a few days of getting to know your students. I love using this short film called Alike. I've used it from kindergarten all the way to uh, seniors. And the reason I've been in kindergarten classes is because as a teacher on special assignment, I've been subbing, I've subbed. And uh, this film is just powerful at any level. And so you can have a great discussion there about what makes us unique. Uh, if you want to you know, jumpstart into an, uh, your unit, this uh, for ninth graders at our district, we begin with something called Marigolds, a short story about characterization. You might want to go into you know, students' names and what that represents. And Sandra Cisneros has a great little uh, vignette. Or another favorite one of mine is Langston Hughes, Mother to Son. Life for me ain't been no crystal stair. And we talk about what does that uh, poem mean? And then they imitate that poem. Uh, again, lots of other activities I've done in the past. You don't have to do all of these, but you can really extend this lesson and get into your writing, your reading, uh, your speaking skills. Uh, this is research in their name, making a vision board, uh, posting their work on like a web, their own self-created web page or blog, or posting it on Padlet. So again, uh, I have lots of different activities. I'm going to continue to add lessons and uh, tips that have helped me along the way. I not to brag, but I could probably count in one hand maybe two of how many kids i've had discipline issues with in 25 years of teaching in a you know low income school community where some teachers might say and some people might believe oh that's a tough school right um and i've loved every day and i respect each of my students and they all bring in something valuable and they know that and i feel that and they will know that uh, about themselves when they leave my classroom so uh i welcome if you have any questions for me or would like some more information, let me know. As I say, uh, I have all my information here. Thank you so much and have a great year.